everybody. I am coming to you rather spur of the moment. So I've tied up my big shirt and I'm going to show you a little something about goblet squats in bone boot camp. So one of the things we have to keep in mind is that anything that I show you is not meant for a regular gym customer. It is meant for someone with osteoporosis and even osteopenia because more than 50% of fractures happen in people with osteopenia. So let's just take a look at what a goblet squat might look like at a gym. And you're not going to see my bum all the way down, sadly. I'm actually going to move the camera. So at a gym, you might see me do a goblet squat like so. Now you might think that my back is fairly straight here. It's not. That is a tucked tail. That is compression in my lumbar spine. You may have done this numerous times without a problem, as I just did, but I would never teach a person with osteopenia or osteoporosis to do it that way. That is not, it's not considered um, something that I would, that would be defensible for me to have done. That's, that's how I'll put it to you. So everyone can take their advice, um, their own advice, I guess is what I'm saying, and you can make decisions for yourself. What we do know is that doing a goblet squat is helpful in loading your hip. What you may see when someone is learning to do it in a neutral spine, you may see something that is not what you would like to see, meaning they may do what I'm doing right here, so there's a bit of a hip hinge in this. That's fine. That's my version of a goblet squat, and it's totally okay. Now, if a person goes more forward because they have a light enough weight that they can't tell what's going on, they can't tell where the load is, let's say the person went all the way here, which I think is what um, Michelle was talking about, you cannot tell me that that person is guaranteed to have an injury. This is one of the biggest mistakes I made in the beginning of my teaching, is feeling certain that something was going to happen. It's, it's really interesting because I was writing a blog post. Um, I was inspired to the blog post by Jules Mitchell, who is a fabulous researcher who has a book on the biomechanics of yoga. And I have read a recent blog of hers where she talks about needing to do your own inquiry, needing to do your own research, and needing to admit when you're wrong. And like Jules, I had a notion that certain things we do in yoga or Pilates will lead to injury. We don't actually know that. So, sorry, I'm going to um, decline this phone call, sorry. So we don't actually know that. And um, a case in point would be that I have been teaching uh, movement and Pilates to a gentleman who is 70, and he does his push-ups in a way that I sort of shudder at. And I think, oh my gosh, that's gonna cause an injury. Yet, he's been doing it for probably 55 years of his 70 year old life. He's never had an injury and he's probably the most fit 70 year old I've ever seen. So we can't say that what we see predicts injury. We really can't. And the biggest benefit out of movement is I would love for all of you to be strong in every range of motion. So even if you're a hyper extender of your elbows, I want you to be strong so that you can control your range of motion should you go into hyperextension. It's very different than going into hyperextension and hanging out 
in your joint. So I'm going to go with the thought that we have to, we don't have to do anything. I apologize. It would be nice if we could all take a breath and not make assumptions, number one. And number two, know that we meet everybody where they are on their journey. And we slowly bring people to what might be the cover of a fitness magazine, maybe. But the point being, you don't need to be the cover of a fitness magazine. None of us do. We need to be functional. Function is the key to everything. So my heart sank a little bit um, in I just want to bring to you the notion that we all are going to look different. We are all going to learn how to hip hinge. We are all going to learn where the cue works best for one person versus another. One of the things I talked about today was that for some people, my cue in bone boot camp before you come up in a hip hinge is to find your hamstrings. We might even scratch them. We might bend and straighten. We might act like we're gonna think about the imagery of flicking your heels behind you before you come up in that, out of that hip hinge. For some people, that's not the cue that works. I've been having a lot of success with people with low back pain. Recently, I've been really making sure that we cue grabbing the clutch purse. So if your barbell or bar or kettlebell is out here, grab that clutch purse. In the weightlifting world, it's called packing the shoulder. I don't like the connotation of that. I really like the clutch purse because you get a little external rotation. And when you come up, your upper back is alive and really helping you. And you're less likely to dump into your lower back. But we also have to cue, yes, getting the hamstrings on. But today, we I realized that we needed to cue more of the upper body. So everyone is different, and I wish everyone could have a private with me or with somebody else. But when we do group learning, we take it one step at a time slowly, and we keep people safe. And I promise you, when you're working with low weight, if you end up out here and you didn't hear my cue to keep the weight close to your body, you might feel a little something. But we are not progressing in weight so quickly that you're going to be irreparably damaged. So anybody who has questions, you can post in this group and share what your form looks like and ask for feedback. And so let's all just be really respectful of each other's situation, that this should be a zone of comfort and ease and a place where there's no judgment. So thank you and have a wonderful long weekend if you're in the United States and celebrating Thanksgiving. <laughs>